Hayden Chair. My name is Courtney Michelle, and I am the Vice President of Longmont Sister Cities Association. And I would like to welcome you tonight to our annual meeting. Our bylaws dictate that we must have an annual meeting in the month of January. And so we use this opportunity to meet everybody and have some of the ambassadors introduce themselves. So I would like to say, Yoko So, Bienvenido, and Ina Dos. Welcome in the languages of our sister cities. Um, stick around, there's some business we have to take care of and we're gonna have some trivia at the end, so a little bit of fun. And at the very end, we're gonna have a catered appetizer style uh, food out in the, in the hallway out there, so please stay. And um, on a more somber note, I would like to ask for a moment of silence for Ted Klein. He was the husband of Lee Klein, who is a past president of Sister Cities, and Ted was a great friend of LSCA. So if we would please take a moment to wish him on his way and wish Lee all the best. Okay, thank you very much. I would now like to introduce one of our elders, Sue Bolton. We have learned a lot from our new sister city, the Northern Arapaho, that elders are our respected members of our group. And Sue is gonna tell us about this, the history of sister cities. And listen, because one of the things she's gonna say is in the trivia tonight. Okay, I see a couple of other elders in the audience because <laughs> Connie Ferenz and Jeannie Finley are also longtime members of Sister Cities Board. <laughs> it is. It, it's a good thing. <laughs> but they also can correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, um, Sister Cities International got started because President Eisenhower, after World War II, felt that if ordinary citizens could get together uh, with ordinary citizens of another country, they could do more to promote world peace than perhaps uh, government leaders. And so that was one of the people-to-people -people, um, organizations that came out of uh, President Eisenhower's idea. Mm -hmm. So it started way back in the 1950s, but Longmont didn't get involved with Sister Cities until about 1990. And uh, at that time, uh, we had been through a recession. So, several of the business and civic leaders in town wanted to start some kind of an uh, organizational um, friendship with, a, with another country and have a sister city. And so Bill Hosokawa, who was uh, a very prominent um, newspaper man and author, helped Mr. Kanamoto and other people from Longmont start a relationship with Chino Japan. Um, the formal signing for that one was in 1990 with um, our mayor. Um, <laughs> just before you, Leona, <laughs> Fred, Fred Wilson. Fred Wilson was the mayor at that time. But then Leona Stacker. <laughs> Uh, was the next mayor, and uh, she realized that we really needed to have a year-round organization to uh, organize the activities and the homestays and all that kind of thing, because um, the mayor of Chino um, at that time wanted to have a student exchange as part of the program. So in 91, he sent a group of students over, and Leona's, um, by the way, Leona, Stand up just a minute so they'll know who you are <laughs> in, in case anybody doesn't know. Leona Stacker was our mayor at that time. Uh, Leona realized that it was too much for the staff. The first year, the, her staff had to hustle around and get homestay arrangements and activities and everything for the students who were coming. And they found families who had teenagers in the family and they they set up the um, activities and everything, but she realized that that was really too much to ask of her staff in addition to all their other duties and that we needed a, a citizens group to do it. When Bill Carlson moved back to Longmont where he had grown up, um, he had experience with sister cities in Arizona 
and he also wanted to get involved in the community, so he went to Leona and said, what can I do in the community? And she said, take over this Sister Cities <laughs> organization. So he was our first president. And um, after the students came here in 91, then the following summer, the, the kids from those families got to go in the first, first trip over to Japan, and I was one of the chaperones for that um, excursion, which was very, very educational. Um, so for the first few years, it was every other year. We would send them to Japan, then they would come here the following year. But uh, after Bill Carlson took over the organization, um, the board decided that we really wanted to do um, an exchange both ways every year, so we started that in 95. Might have been 92. Anyway, um, we soon also had people on our board who said, we really need to have another sister city, one that uh, has Spanish-speaking people, because we have a large Mexican-American population here, and we need to have better relationships um, going in that direction. So um, Dan Benavides, who was a, he, he had been a city councilman. He was also a businessman. He did a lot of importing. He set us up with Ciudad Guzman. And pretty soon we started having um, student exchanges going both ways every year. They would go, we'd send kids to Chino, um, eight kids to Chino, eight kids to Ciudad Guzman for a 10-day homestay. And then the, after that, they would come here for a 10-day homestay with the families. And we had lots of activities. It's been going great up until the pandemic, and that kind of uh, made it difficult to have any kind of exchange. But we're so happy that now uh, we think we're going to be able to resume our exchanges, and we're glad to see all of you here to participate in that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue. Um, I would like to now ask Sam Safey to come up and we will elect the executive board. Every year, my job is the shortest portion of this meeting. And by, th by the way, but I'm very impressed with your attendance. So thank you in this call. Uh, it shows your support for us. Uh, you work throughout the year, so thank you. Thank you for attending. Do we have candidates for president, vice president, uh, secretary, one of the more difficult jobs, and the financial advisor or bookkeeper slash, slash treasurer, many things. Any candidates from the floor? No. Okay. No? We, I have names. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I suggest we elect Janice Rebben as president, Courtney Michelle as vice president, Mike Seaton as secretary, and Patricio, in, I can't pronounce the last Double name, Yanis as to treasurer. All those who are in favor, please show by your right, right hand. More importantly, any opposed by the same side. <laughs> very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and if anyone would be interested in joining our board meetings, becoming on the executive board or anything like that, please start attending our meetings, which are the second Thursday of every month in the room just down the hall from here. And uh, they're open to the public. You'd be able to attend. Next, we will uh, elect the rest of the board, and I would like to have everyone stand, if you would. Sue Bolton, Cherie Safey, Sam Safey, Margaret Wirth, Atsuko Muse, Dai Kato, Kale Hubert and Karen Bandy.
and Kale and Karen are new to our board. Thank you very much for uh, helping us out and committing to next year to helping us with the first full exchange, hopefully, since the pandemic. Thank you. And Sam, you have one more job to come back up here for just a little bit. We have a financial treasurer's report. Sam was treasurer for last year. And so get ready, Patricia, next year you'll be doing this for us. I had the previous part, right? So we had a, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I have brought all the receipts, the checkbook uh, here for you to examine. So if you open to the public, if you open to the public, please feel free to share with your coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, we had a total income of $67,637. For that, we, our total expenses were $59,630. Are you good with math? So we made $8,000 last year, basically, after all our expenses. On the balance sheet report, we have, uh, because we haven't had exchanges, so we have some equity, uh, we have $85,511 uh, as cash sitting in our account. That's the report. The, the details are sit written here. You're welcome to examine them, and thank you. Thank you, Sam. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to give a little review of 2022, what we were able to accomplish, even with um, very only one exchange. So with Japan, we tried to keep in touch with them a lot, so we did uh, virtual tea parties. We had, Margaret, was it two, three? Two or three. So because of the time difference, we would have to do, they would do early in the morning, and we would do an evening. We would all get on Zoom with our cup of tea, and uh, have a conversation. The very first one, we played some games, some drawing games. Um, There's a couple teachers on that on that call, and so they helped us with those kinds of things because there's a language barrier with Japan, of course, and um, a little bit. How do you do Zoom and all that kind of thing? So we had a fun time doing that and kept in touch and talked about that we hope we will be able to go this year. So uh, those were those were great fun. Uh, for Mexico, it was our 25th anniversary last year, and so that is 25 years of sending kids and receiving kids to and from Mexico. And our sister city there is Ciudad Guzman, and it is south of Guadalajara, and so some of you will be heading there this summer. And um, Mayor Peck went on that visit. That was in August with also some members of the sister city committee. And uh, I heard it was a great time. I missed it, unfortunately, but it was a blowout bash party. And uh, lots of, we got lo lots of gifts came home with us. There was an art piece that is going to be hung somewhere in the library soon. And, um, and they also uh, did the official transfer of a brush truck that was gifted to Mexico on the 20th anniversary five years ago. Um, and it just takes a while to get things across the border, you know. So, um, and a lot of, uh, you know, paperwork and money and all kinds of stuff like that has to happen to, to send something over the border. So that was driven down by Janice this spring. And we have a new friend in, I believe he's in Minneapolis, who is from Ciudad Guzman. He's a fireman in uh, Minneapolis, and he is helping us. Uh, do these kinds of things and, you know, work on translation and equipment and stuff like that. So uh, that did, that arrived there and they are very thankful for it. It is already in use. And the truck that we gifted them 15 years ago is still in use as well. They call it uh, Garita, the little fighter. And um, because Guzman has, as far as I know, maybe two fire hydrants. So, you know, in the U.S., there are codes. You have to have a fire hydrant every so often so the fire trucks can reach it to put out a fire. Well, that is not the case in Mexico. And so uh, the fire truck that we, or a pumper truck that we no longer needed is still in use there and doing good work. And um, they have stickers all over it. They have our logo. They have the Sister Cities logo. They're very proud of it. And um, 
then uh, this year city council also gifted another fire truck, a full size fire truck to the city of Ciudad Guzman. And that is fire truck number eight, I believe is the name of that. And it was involved in the 2013 floods. And so it has a story, it was also before that, before Longmont had it, I think it was at the Indy 500. And so there's a video somewhere out there uh, with that truck, you know, putting out a car fire after a wreck on, uh, on, that, on that car race. So we are working now on when that will be going down there. So we, we're, getting, we're getting better at getting trucks across the border to Mexico and getting driven down all the way to Guzman. Um, so we hope that will happen sometime this spring. Um, we are also, we were visited by two Mexican firefighters who came up here to see the truck that we are going to give to them. And they did some training with our firefighters as well. And uh, the first time they flew was from Guadalajara to Denver. And then they got a special surprise where the a city staff member, uh, Marika Unger, took them up in her little plane at the airport and that was their second flight ever. And so they got to fly around. They also got to see snow, for be in snow for the first time. There is some snow visible sometimes from Guzman on the volcano out there. And uh, they made snow angels. So they had a really good time in the snow. One of them said he would love to come back and go skiing and the other one was like, mm -mm -mm. So, all right. Then we had our first full Arapaho exchange first bilateral exchange. So a couple of years ago, 2019, is that right? We had some of the Arapaho kids come down here for just a few days, but we did not go up there. So this summer was our first time to have the bilateral exchange where we went up there for a week and then some of their kids came down here for a week. So it was very successful. Um, I think everybody learned something. We'll hear from some of the kids who went on that trip in just a little bit. And um, the documentary about our relationship with the Northern Arapaho was also released this year by uh, city funded through the Longmont Public Media. And that was about 45 minutes and I believe there's a link on the, our Facebook page. Um, hopefully it's on our website as well. Um, if you have some time, watch it. It's really moving. I don't think there was a dry eye in the Longmont Museum when it was shown and we had a full house watching it. We also had in November a couple of other films because of uh, Native American Heritage Month. So um, we had some guests from our friends at the Northern Rapo come down. So for the documentary, we had a panel discussion after that. And um, that is also on a separate clip there. And we showed True Grit, which is about a Northern Arapaho uh, writer. And they do, uh, what is that called? Oh my gosh. Indian relay races. If you have never been to the Indian relay races, they do a circuit like the rodeo and they ride bareback on moving horses. I mean, they jump on these things, grab them by the mane and go up there. Uh, Sue, Janice and I went in 2021, but uh, there was a documentary done about a female uh, rider who uh, is from the Northern Arapaho and her story and that was very moving as well. Um, and then uh, Denver 7 News got really interested in our exchange. And I'm going to play a clip, it's about two and a half minutes, of a news story that aired back in November about that. Jenny's in it, and Aiden's in it, and one of our uh, Northern Arapaho ex uh, ex students as well. So let's cue that up. War II, sister cities have brought cultures together worldwide. As Denver 7's Patrick Perez shows us, one front rain city is focused on repairing a relationship right here at home. Culture is rooted in our DNA. Culture is something that can be connecting. It connects us with our past, helps us embrace the present, and guides us toward the future. I feel like when you actually start to look at people's differences and embrace them for that, that's when we're really getting towards you know, being culturally competent and, and really like a path towards equity. In 2021, the Northern Arapaho tribe from the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming became Longmont's third sister city. 
In doing so, it established the first sister city relationship between a sovereign tribal nation and a U.S. city. The word that I've always used for it, it's been friendship. The partnership allows 8th through 11th graders from Colorado to visit the reservation in Wyoming and for kids from the reservation to make their way down to Colorado. I think this relationship really was an attempt to start trying to correct those mistakes that my people made. That is where Aiden and Marley come into this story. They were all part of the first student exchange with the Northern Arapaho this past summer. It's important because some people that have are like me that have never been around, you know, a different culture. It's important to not not look at them any differently and be open to learning about them. Aiden is a freshman at Erie High School. He says his teacher encouraged him to join the program. Think about the reservation. What is like the first thing that comes to mind to you? It's probably like, oh, they're probably not too technology advanced or something like that. They're just us. They, there is literally no difference between me and them. Aiden says this trip allowed him space to recognize the harm done to Native people for generations. They're trying to get their culture back after centuries of it trying to be demolished. Marley is part of the Northern Arapaho tribe and lives on the Wind River Reservation. Following the week-long trip to Longmont, Marley and the teens from the reservation spent a week here in Colorado. We kind of toured through the city of Denver. One of my favorite parts of it was looking at these buildings that had graffiti on them. And then we just all walked through there and it was fun. We were looking at art and we're all bonding really well. We all made friends very easily. Two weeks of cultural immersion revealed lessons these students will remember for a lifetime. Even though we spent two weeks together, we made a family out of it. It is part of our past that we did kind of get stripped of all of our culture and language. But um, as me now, I'm wanting to not take it out on everybody. Just. By looking at their skin color, I wouldn't want to take it out on them. And has created a partnership aimed at bringing cultures together for years to come. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. That's a great idea, but all right, let's see here. There we go. Okay, we're back on. So that was pretty cool. We made Denver news. I mean, wow. And you know, at our inaugural, at our at the September in twenty one was our the time that we came together, and um, and the president of International Sister Cities came and talked to at that. So um, when we first proposed this to Sister Cities International, they uh, discouraged us a little from doing this. And we said, you know, we're going to do it anyway. And we did it. So a lot of people tried it, had not succeeded, and we did. So um, there are probably many reasons for that. It, timing might be one of them. But um, we're making it happen. And our only goal is to be friends, just like Jenny said. And that you know, a lot of people have ideas about what this could be, and we're just out to make new friends. All right. So um, some of the other things we did last year, we attended a couple of festivals. We were at the first Longmont Juneteenth Festival. We had a great booth there and uh, handed out stickers and magnets and, uh, you know, got a lot of attention. We tried to get some people interested in our program to know about it. So um, we also went to Rhythm on the River in July down at Rogers Row, and that was a lot of fun. Russo was actually one of the MCs for some of the music there, and we had a good time. Then we attended Unity in the Community, which is a city and chamber of commerce uh, joint festival, and had a booth there, and also at Dia de los Muertos. So we hope to do more this year. And if you would like to help us, you don't have to join the board to help us out. We love our friends of LSCA. And so we have a lot of former members. We have a lot of people who can't commit to that monthly meeting and those subcommittees that we all have to do a lot of work for. And if you can't and you just want to help us out, some of those festivals are a great way to do that because we need people to, you know, staff that and have people at the table walking around, sending people to our table and, and you know, to the people who know about 
um, all the details of our program and get the word out. All right. So 2023, we're looking forward to an exchange. And um, so one thing there, is the, the group we work with at the Northern Arapaho is called 477, and that is their youth organization group. And they have just texted us today asking about a blanket drive. So we still have not organized the details of that at all. If anyone is interested in helping us uh, make that happen, gathering blankets for some of the students and families of our friends up there at the Wind River Reservation, please speak to me afterwards. I think it might also be a great project for some of the ambassadors, but I haven't talked to any of the chaperones about that. So um, it's just a, just a, a bee in your bonnet to let's, let's do some good out there. All right, for several years, we have been working on an art in public places uh, project, and Nicole has been helping a lot with that. And that is finally coming to fruition this year. So we have, uh, there has been a, a chosen piece of art. It's gonna be a gazebo-like thing. And it's going to be up at McIntosh Lake, Flanders Park on the north side. So from that is you're gonna be able to see uh, Long's Peak and the mountain. So that is gonna commemorate our relationship with Ciudad Guzman. And uh, that will be installed sometime this summer and uh, hopefully be there, and it definitely will be able to have like a, a ribbon cutting at the exchange, we hope. And so one thing coming up on January 31st, from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the museum, I believe will be a review of the color palette. So if any of the board members or other members of the community are interested in looking at that, then uh, you will need to RSVP. I will send an email out to the board or try to put it on our Facebook page, so that you could attend that. So um, unfortunately, I don't have pictures of it, but it's a really cool uh, gazebo with seating. We wanted a gathering type place. And one of the themes we have with Mexico is the butterfly, because the butterflies you know, migrate to and from, and they transform as they do. And so we see our ambassadors transform as they go through this program. And so the gazebo is covered in uh, it cut out butterflies that then are placed on the outside of it. It's really beautiful, and we hope all you, we, you will all be there. I'll send out another uh, invite through the MailChimp is what most of y'all heard about this. So I'll send out an invite for when we do the unveiling of that. All right. Um, on February 18th at 10 a.m. at the museum, uh, Nayal Bior, who is from Sudan, but she's a teacher here, will be discussing her book, Changing Your Blues to Blue Skies. I believe it's a memoir about her immigration and migration on, on her trip to get over to the United States. So that's something of interest for um, in February for uh, Black Heritage Month. All right. Also, not planned yet, but happening sometime, is a visit by the mayor of Ciudad Guzman. His name is Alejandro Baragan. We are still working on the dates for that. And uh, so that'll be, he'll probably come with some other, some, a little bit of a, some friends. And so we'll have some events around that. Whether it will be at the exchange or at a separate time, we don't yet know. And then we hope to visit the Wind River Reservation with the board and uh, members of city staff and city council. So that is in the works, but not yet set as well in our plans. And then of course, the exchanges with Mexico, uh, Northern Arapaho, and Japan. Now, so we sent out a notice about Japan. They are not going to be sending students here this year, unfortunately. But they have a meeting in two days on the 21st where they are going to try to get together and get a good convincing argument that they are gonna receive us. So we still do not know that for sure, whether that will happen. So everybody keep your fingers crossed that they can convince that to happen. You know, there's multiple reasons why this is still going on and we don't need to go into those. So we hope that will happen and uh, we're, we're going to continue our planning uh, with the thought that it's going to happen, all right? Okay, so now what I would like to do is ask any ambassadors from uh, prior to 22, so any more, you know, not last year, we're going to do that in a minute, can you come up, can you come up, can you come up, anybody who's been on any exchange prior to last year, 
and I would like you to introduce yourself, tell us where you went, and give us a little, you know, what was your best memory or experience that happened on the exchange? I guess I'm going first. <laughs> um, my name is Margaret Wirth. I went to Chino, Japan in 2019. And what, what else am I supposed to say? Just my experience, basically. Yeah, it was a life-changing experience. It was very wonderful. It really got me thinking about how, you know, as was just said in the little news clip, that we're all the same. You know, even though Japan is so far away from the US, you know, and culturally we're very different. We speak different languages and eat different foods, but we're all the same people deep down. And that's the main takeaway that I got from that. And it's like, you can say that as much as you want, but you're never really gonna feel that until you experience it yourself. So I think that's the really special thing about going on these exchanges is getting to experience that and know that for yourself. And it was just really cool to see Japan. I love the culture, the food was delicious, and my host family was awesome. So it was a great experience, and I'm grateful to Sister Cities, and I've been on the board ever since. Hello, uh, I'm Jordan Bagley. I went to Chino, Japan in 2018. Yeah, that sounds right, I think. Uh, and I was part of the group where the Arapaho came down the first time uh, before COVID. Kind of ruined that a little bit. But um, my experience in Chino was really good. Met a lot of good people, ate really good food, went cool places. I mean, it's Japan. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, like going there and doing everything, just the things that we did was really fun. Uh, those two days in Tokyo were really fun, but being with like my host family and actually doing stuff with them, uh, that includes setting off fireworks at two in the morning was awesome. <laughs> it was really cool. Apparently they sell those at their supermarket all the time. That's good to know, but uh, <laughs> it was really cool to do that and uh, just hang out with everyone. Uh, and personally, I've gone up to the Wyoming a lot, uh, and I've been up on the reservation quite a bit. I've talked with Crawford and like everyone, uh, and they tell good stories. They make good food, and everyone's really nice, and uh, we still talk to them all the time. So p everyone's cool there. They, they're good people, and it's a good experience to have. Uh, I mean, they're, they're our neighbors. Why not know them? It's, it makes things better. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thanks for coming tonight. All right. All of you who went last summer to the Wind River Reservation, could you please come up? Everybody take a deep breath. All right, just say your name, where you go to school, and one memory, and you can talk a little more if you like. Tell us what you what you thought of the exchange. Hi, I'm Stella. I go to Niwot High School, and I did the Wind River Rapo Exchange. And like, a memory for me was the powwow and going and just getting to experience their amazing culture and seeing how they live, how it's different, how it's very similar, because again, like Aiden said, we're all human and we all share the same experiences. I think that was really awesome. And bonding with everybody, creating a family together, I think that was pretty cool. So my name is Alexander. I go to Scotland High School. And one of, some of my favorite things from the Northern Arapaho Exchange was one, the food, because really good. Um, and two was the Sundance. Uh, it was just like, it was an experience that you won't get anywhere else. It's just completely different, and it it changes you. And yeah, what Stella said, we I learned how similar we are and what we have in like how we're different. Um, hi, my name is Natalie Heinze. I go to Niwot, and everything Stella and Alex said was amazing but I really liked all the car rides because that's, I say this every time and people laugh, but that's where I got to know everybody. That's where I got to learn things about people and we made a lot of memories on the bus, good or, or bad. Thank you. 
in the back of the seat. I'm looking at you guys. <laughs> my name is Mauro. I go to Erie High School, and I think my favorite part was the hotel. <laughs> we would play like Uno in like each other's hotel rooms, which was really fun. And I also liked meeting new people and just trying their food, which was also really fun. Uh, hello, my name is Aiden. Uh, you already saw me up on the screen. Um, uh, I go to Erie High School, and probably uh, a couple of my favorite things are definitely the food. Um, I really wish the aunties would come down again so they could make me more fry bread. Um, I ate a lot at there for sure. Uh, Pow Wow was really fun for sure. And then I also got to meet a lot of new people in a lot of different ways that I didn't know I was going to be able to experience in my life. So it was really cool. Thank you very much. And inaugural exchange, I mean, that's going to be, this is a first, right? Okay, y'all can go ahead and sit down. Some of you are going to come back up in a minute, though, right? Okay, so how about who is going to Japan? Chaperones and ambassadors, can you please come up and introduce yourself? He's back, he's back, all right. Right. We'll start with you. Name, please, where you teach, where you go to school, and what you're looking forward to most. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Francisco Sandoval. I'm a teacher at Skyline High School. Um, it's, let's see, I was supposed to go to Mexico, and then COVID kind of messed that one up. Uh, so I'm super excited to be able to travel with students um, to mix my two passions of traveling uh, along with teaching. Um, I don't know, I think it's going to be a great time. So I'm super excited uh, to be traveling with, with this group. I know we're missing a couple, but uh, we are, I mean, I'm super excited. So. Uh, my name is Alexander. Uh, I go to Skyline High School. I'm a freshman. Uh, what I'm really looking forward to is, um, I've never been on a plane before, so I'm excited for that. Uh, I hear the food is really good, and just overall going to a different country and meeting new people. Uh, that's one thing I really like is meeting new people because they always have different perspectives and there's like, you can learn so much just from looking at the world through a different person's view. Yep. Uh, hi, I'm Lexi. I also go to Longmont High School, and I'm excited to learn the differences of the cultures in a, like a different way than just from an outside point of view and actually being there and experiencing everything, like what they do similarly and differently. Hi, I'm Catherine, and I go to Niwot High School, and one thing I'm looking forward to is um, going to a new country and sharing our cultures with each other and also eating the food because I've heard it's really delicious. Hi, I'm also Catherine. <laughs> um, I'll be the second chaperone for the trip to Japan this summer. I'll echo what Francisco said. I'm very excited. Um, I am most looking forward to the homestay and really getting to spend some time with a, a family locally. And like everybody else, the food is think going to be a lot of a lot of fun to e experiment with so I'm very excited Senior 23. All right. okay how about those who are going to Mexico please come up Wherever, it doesn't matter, it's okay. We'll have a chaperone start though, yeah. Book in them, yep, yep. Hey everyone, I'm Kale Hubert. I teach English as a second language, primarily at Front Range Community College. I'm very excited and happy to be here, honored to be here. Um, I guess I'm excited most to experience new things with a new set of friends and confidants, so. 
my name is Sean O'Leary, and I am a sophomore at Nowa High School, and I'm probably most excited to stay at someone else's house and just, like, experience their way of life. Um, <laughs> Hola, me llamo Greta, Greta Stotch, y estoy un estudiante de segundo curso en Nowa High School. Hi, my name is Greta Stotch. I'm a sophomore at Nowa High School. And I'm most excited to meet my host family and spend time with someone and practice Spanish and try new things, experience a new place, and yeah. Hi, I'm Kenneth Kaminsky. I'm a sophomore at Longmont High School, and I'm really excited to experience a new culture and try new food. Hi, I'm Laura Orner. I'm a junior at Longmont High School, and I'm excited to meet a lot of new people. Hi again, I'm Natalie Heinze. I'm a freshman at Long, not Longmont, Niwot High School. Um, I'm looking forward to staying with the host family because I've never really stayed with different people like that before and I think it'll be a really good experience. Hola, me llamo Harper Beamer. I'm a junior at Niwot High School and I'm most excited to be immersed in the culture through the homestay. Hola, mi nombre es Miranda. Yo soy de Puerto Rico. Eh, no sé, no sé qué decir, pero estoy bien nerviosa, pero también bien contenta porque es algo nuevo. Hi, my name is Miranda. I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, I don't really have much to say. I am a little bit nervous, but I am super excited to learn about a different country and different cultures. I already have two cultures in my system. So it's so nice to always learn more. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my name is Aiden wagner Grohl. I'm a freshman at Erie High School. Um, and I'm honestly, once again, really excited about the food because you already know it's, <laughs> it's going to be real <laughs> good up there. And then uh, <laughs> I'm really excited to be able to um, just experience what it's going to be like to live down there. Uh, it'll be my first time going international, so I'm really excited for that. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel, I'm the other chaperone for the trip. I work for the city of Longmont, I do communications and help facilitate things like this with the news channels. Um, not this one in particular, but <laughs> um, I'm excited. I've been to other parts of Mexico before, and but never Jalisco, never Guadalajara area. So to see how those are different and um, I mean like the food. And I think Miranda, everyone would be lying if they said they weren't a little nervous, so you're good. <laughs> Thank you, Mexico 23. Go ahead and sit back down. All right. And those who are going up to the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming, please come up. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen. And I'll be a chaperone this year. Um, both of my daughters, I have two daughters, 18 and 20, both of them have done the exchange to Mexico and Japan, and it was absolutely wonderful for them. Um, so if you have any questions what it's like to go or for students to stay in your home, come and see me afterwards. And I think I'd lend a different or an interesting perspective because I was an exchange student about 30-something years ago, um, and I stayed in the Netherlands for 10 months with Rotary. And I was telling the students at our first meeting, it was, it was a very unique exchange to kind of get your head around because there wasn't computers and there wasn't cell phones. So it was a lot of snail mail writing. So I'm looking forward to seeing this group change as well. Hello, everybody. My name is Jenny Diaz-Leon. I am a, a community coordinator for the city of Longmont's Children, Youth, and Family Division, so the Longmont Youth Center. I'm so excited to be part of this again. Uh, I have been participating with Sister Cities, I think since 2017. I was supposed to go on a trip to Mexico along with Patricio and the rest of the crew, uh, but I wasn't able to because I was in the process of getting my citizenship. Uh, but then the year after, I was uh, very excited to get involved with the Northern Arapaho uh, exchange, connecting with the people. Uh, and like I said in the video, making friendships is the very first piece of that. And then that transforms into family. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to see this new cohort of students uh, traveling 
And if I could share my favorite men memory from the trip last year, it was connecting with the students and hearing their reflections about the different experiences that they were having. So I look forward to having those moments with you all as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Henry Stotch. Um, I'm a senior at Niwot High School. And I really look forward to um, seeing a culture that I've kind of lived close to my whole life but I've never experienced. So that's, I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm Ian Ritchie. I'm a junior at Longmont High School. Um, I'm most excited to uh, meet new people and uh, see a new culture. I'm Molly Riddle. I'm a sophomore at Silver Creek. And I'm excited to experience a new culture and see all these new perspectives and other perspectives, as everyone's mentioned. Um, hi, I'm a, I, my name is Terry McDermott, and I am a junior at Niwot High School. And um, basically, like everyone said, I'm really just excited to meet all of these new people and kind of um, experience this culture that, again, like I've lived next to my whole life. I know my family has lived next to for a long, long time, but I've just never um, been able to see or appreciate and so I'm really excited to be able to have that opportunity. Um, hi, my name is, oh, sorry, um, Paloma Delgado and I'm probably most excited to be an exchange student. I'm an exchange student myself and I, it seems really fun. My name is Haley Donahue. I'm a freshman at Silver Creek. Um, I think I'm really excited to learn about the culture because I've visited a lot of places or even lived in places that have a different culture and I've never got to really learn about different cultures in America, really only in foreign countries. So I'm super excited for that. Um, hello, my name is Sayara Kyleback. Um, I'm a freshman at Silver Creek High School and I'm most excited for learning about culture too and meeting new people, especially my host family, as well as eating delicious food. Hi, I'm Bridget Dermody. I'm a freshman at Silver Creek High School, again. <laughs> um, and I'm most excited for traveling and art, seeing all the art. Uh, hi, my name is Patricio Yanis. Patricio Alejandro Yanis Davis Trigo. I am a teacher over at Erie Middle School. And um, I also work for an organization called Together. They used to be called Attention Homes. I've uh, been doing that for about 10 years, or the Youth Homeless Runaway Shelter. And you know, as I reflect on uh, this time with uh, uh, Northern Arapaho and our relationship, I'm reminded of the first time our executive director at Together said, hey, you know, we really want to build a housing first project for homeless youth in Boulder, Colorado, that um, you know, will go up downtown and will be there for years and years to come. It actually, on the contract it said, for 100 years, it is only gonna be used to house homeless youth. And I was part of a group of people that really fought hard for that and were in front of uh, you know, places like this uh, speaking to it. And uh, when we finally accomplished it, I've seen that brick and mortar there. I've stood in there. I have known many youth that um, had been housed and are housed in there. Um, it just felt so good uh, to see something come to fruition that was so much bigger than yourself and to be a part of something that was so much bigger than yourself. And as I connect that with uh, sister cities um, and the group of people up here, the group of people um, in attendance that are really trying to build this new relationship, um, it's been so nice to be a part of something that's so much greater than what you are and something that'll last longer than when we get old and when we are, you know, beyond what we're doing in our lives, um, that there'll still be uh, folks getting to share in this uh, beautiful relationship with you. So I'm excited for that. Thank you very much. Oh, everybody's so excited to go. I mean, what an experience. I myself was a Rotary Exchange student like Karen to Norway in 1990, and it changed my life. It changed what I decided to study at school. It changed uh, the trajectory of almost everything that I experienced. And I have a really good friend there. I'm the godmother, godmother of two of her children. And her oldest, who is 30 this year, is having her baby. And I'm going to go to the, uh, the, con the baptism in August or September. So there's a, generations, you know, come from this, this, these kinds of things. And... I've also found these are, these are short trips as an exchange, but uh, when I was first a chaperone in 2007, 
uh, two or three of the ambassadors that went on my trip to Mexico went on to do a year study abroad because it helps you know you can do it, right? It, like, it might be scary, you might be nervous if you haven't traveled a lot, and it shows you that everybody, we are all the same, and there's just the differences are this little bitty bit, and those are the gems that make it, make everything really, really fun. All righty, so on the back table where uh, Leona's sitting, there is a, I put up about 20 pieces of paper, and it's for the Ray Anderton Memorial Scholarship. Ray was a board member with us, and um, when he passed, his wife wanted to set up a, a scholarship to help kids who uh, might need a little help with their travel expenses. As we know, Japan, that plane ticket could be quite pricey. So this scholarship is used to help with your travel. It will be a judged competition. There will be five winners. And uh, the entries are due on March 31st. All this is on that flyer, so pick one up on the way out. The amount will be $500 or the cost of transportation if it turns out to be less than $500. And um, all that will go towards your travel. The theme is Hidden Gems of Longmont. They can be, uh, that can be a photo project, a video, an essay, a dance, or any other creative idea. So come up with something fun. You must send it to lsca.org at gmail.com by the entry date, which is March 31st. And if it's not possible to send it, if it's a, if it's a performance, for example, um, then you just need to describe it and send it to that email address, okay? And then we will have the judging happen in April and the winners will be announced. So pick up a piece of paper right at that back table. Leona has them, Bernie, wave your hand, yeah, they're right up there. Pick one of those up, everybody get creative and get some money to help you with your, um, with your travel. Okay, I said at the beginning we'd do a little trivia. Were you paying attention when Sue gave her speech? Because some of it's gonna be in here. And you know, we've never done this before, we just thought we'd do something fun. So just, you know, yell out, or if it gets a little crazy, I'll have you raise your hands. But you know, we'll see. Okay, so first one is, what do all of our sister cities have in common? All right, good food, she said. Now, I knew there would be multiple answers to this. I only have two, really, but anything else? Mountains, they all have mountains. Yes, they do. Now, do you consider a volcano a mountain? I think so. So in Chino, I mean, in Sierra Guzman, uh, out from the, over the lake across this, the city, you can see uh, the Colima volcano. And so they have a mountain too. Anything else? What else do they have in common? Well, possibly, I don't know about that. There could be, mo uh, so with the mountains, what else is there usually when there's mountains around? They're at elevation. So I got some facts for you here for trivia. I won't make you guess the numbers. So Chino is the lowest at 801 meters, which is 2628 feet. And their city hall is the highest city hall location in Japan. I didn't know that, learned that today when I was putting together my list of trivia. Okay, Ciudad Guzman is 1,507 meters, which is 4,944 feet. The Wind River, now I don't know where on the Wind River they are because that's a big place, but Wikipedia says that they are 1,762 meters, which is 5,781. But if you include some of the mountains that are probably on the reservation, they're probably the highest, and they are anyway. So, and Longmont, of course, we are at 15, 19 meters, which is 4,984 feet. So, we're all at elevations. We all can see some mountains from town. All right, next question. What is the difference between Arapaho with an E and Arapaho without an E at the end? Close, very close. Yep. So, more general, maybe. I had to ask, I asked them myself. I was like, there's, I see it spelled different ways. So the, with the E is the place. And without the E is the people. 
So when you see Arapahoe Road, Arapahoe County, Arapahoe, everything that's named around here for them, um, it's usually with an E, but the people don't have an E. All right. Um, and here's some from, if you were paying attention, you might win prizes I don't have to give out. All right. What former businessman and city council member was, resp was responsible for introducing us to Ciudad Guzman? Dan Benavides, very good. Now they may have cheated because they knew from before, but you know, they paid attention. All right, which former US president stated to, started the people to people movement resulting in the formation of Sister Cities International? We have a hand, okay, we'll try that. Eisenhower, very good. And which former Longmont mayor encouraged the formation of a citizen group called Longmont Sister Cities Association in 1995? Leona, and she's here with us. She <laughs> Thank you very much for playing. All right, we are a little ahead of schedule and uh, we are gonna have some food, but they are hopefully arriving soon and gonna set up. So um, what I would like to do is have parents stick around in this room with the chaperones maybe and talk about fundraising ideas. Um, does anyone wanna help with that? Mm -hmm. You want to share some that we've done before? Anyone want to come up and share some fundraising ideas? Because what we do is, you know, you have to pay for the tickets, the plane tickets, right, to go to these places, and then a little spending money. So uh, the parents help organize the fundraising events. So you want to share? Yeah? Come on up. Just because we are live streaming, by the way, and they can only see up here. So. So in the exchange that I did get to go to before uh, the reservation was to Japan, uh, and our cohort uh, organized a fundraiser at Fuzzy's Tacos. And what they did is they had a dessert that they would be able to go around and offer to the tables. All of the money that was raised through that was given to the group. So it was wonderful. It was a really good way of uh, bonding and getting to know each other and our leadership styles as well. Um, and it was a great way to get our Sister Cities community together to be able to support these kinds of programs. I remember that one, cookies. The cookies were really good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have some ideas they want to share or thoughts we've done before? Come up, Sam. Come on up here. Come, Sam, get, you get one more job. Come up here and tell a little bit about that. Okay. We did car wash for several years, and it worked very well. Uh, we sold tickets for $10, and we didn't pay the car wash people any because they gave us the car wash for free. So that we made a couple thousand dollars that one day. Uh, the restaurants where they pay you 5%, 10% of the revenue at the end of the evening has not worked out. I remember being cold on Main Street <laughs> for hours and hours and 10 people showed up and at the end of the evening we got $20. <laughs> so don't do that. Uh, uh, one thing uh, I can put a plug for uh, Sister Studies uh, Association and that is uh, King Super, uh, you can choose uh, when you uh, get their cards, if you have their cards, uh, then uh, the 5% of the profit goes toward, or a portion of the profit, I don't know how much exactly, what percentage, but a portion of it goes to the people that you choose. And they have a list of 200 uh, nonprofits, and one of them is Sister City. So if you do grocery anyway, you might as well choose Sister Cities. So a portion of what you buy, the points that you get, a portion of it, your point, you get your points, but you also uh, contribute to Sister Cities. And let me put my glasses on and I'll tell you how much we made last year out of that, uh, just from the board alone. That means my wife buys a lot. 
a uh, gift card, $323. So uh, just the board alone, uh, you make some money. Again, it doesn't go, it's not for your trip, but it's good for uh, sisters. Okay, where's Cherie? Cherie, are you here? Okay, any other ideas? Thank you. Um, yeah, we did Pizza Palace fundraisers, and it was through Old Chicago. We don't have an Old Chicago here anymore, but you can still use those gift cards. You'd have to go to an Old Chicago and get it. But it's a $10 gift card, and I think we paid $5 for each of them, and then it's worth a $25 pizza. And they can be used anywhere around the country, and they don't expire. So. I was a chaperone in 2016, and I stockpiled them. And I literally just used my last old Chicago gift card like a month ago. So they don't expire. Very good. Thank you. You want to come up? Just so we're, you know, everybody can hear you. We got to talk in the mic. So because we have, we might have our friends from Japan. I sent it to them. Our friends from the Northern Arapaho and Mexico and some other Longmont people who couldn't make it are watching us live right now. Don't be nervous. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> mainly because my uh, high school daughter is sitting here and she's like, Dad. Don't do All that. Right. Dad. <laughs> exactly. Don't do it, Dad. Well, you brought up the topic of it. My name is Michael Beamer, and um, I've been living here in Longmont for, I'm not in high school. Uh, I've been in Longmont like 19 years now. I own Aspen Mental Health Group. But that's my domestic job. My uh, overseas job is I'm a mental health assessor for disaster veterans. Uh, and I've been doing that for 20 years. And the question I get asked the most, whether it's a student, like an intern, or it's a doctor or nurse, like Dr. John Borders, is how do we raise money? And so when you said that, I was like, oh, maybe I should say something. Your biggest fans are going to be your friends and family, people that typically live around you and have grown up or have watched you grow up and grow up. And so um, one of the things that people have said over the years that have been really successful is tell them what you want to learn. Create like a bullet point list and actually talk with them directly, not social media, not texting. Text to coordinate a meeting, have coffee with them, and say, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for five people to cover this specific amount. And add about 15 to 20% to it if you think there's going to be things that are unforeseen costs, just in case. And then when you're over, I've been to Japan, I've been to Mexico, you can still, anywhere in the world, get postcards very, very cheap. Get a postcard, say thank you, and tell them a little bit about your trip. The follow-up is actually more important for the fundraising than the introduction, because that way they're included. And this way, for the first time I went overseas was with People to People International. I was 15 years old and a freshman. And back then you spent three months and I was in Russia and the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine back then. And I remember I forgot all about the postcard because how long you could have been doing this. And I, I rushed and got a bunch for like three cents a piece. But still I'm in touch with people that supported me when I was 15. Uh, and now I'm not. And so 20 <laughs> years later, that one trip, that one trip to Europe, Eastern Europe and Russia has allowed me to continue to You're, you're off to a great start. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. That's a great idea. Do you want to come up and tell us of something? Some ideas? Come on up. I like your sweatshirt, dinosaurs. Hi, my name's Haley Donahue. Um, an idea I've seen is called a calendar buyout. So kids, basically every kid gets to choose their own month or like a month, it can be the same month as someone else, and you send it to your family and friends or you post it on social media and you ask for someone to sponsor one month, one day of the month. So if it's, if someone chooses, hey, I'm gonna sponsor day one, they get, they donate one dollar and it goes on. So every day of the month, so like if you choose a month that has 31 days, 
if someone sponsors day 31, they're gonna pay you $31. Um, and so kids can choose their own month. They can choose a month that's special to them or you could choose a month. You're going in like July um, and you send it to your family and friends and you see how much money you can fundraise and how many people you can get. But every person can only sponsor one day. So if you have someone who's like, hey, I wanna sponsor day seven and someone else is already sponsoring day seven, they can choose a different day or they can double up on the day. Idea. Some new stuff we haven't heard before. Anyone else want to share? Write your grandma, says Sam. That's always a good, a good option. All right, looks like the food is being set up out there. So um, if parents do want to discuss some of those ideas together, uh, please stay in here a little bit. Or, um, you know, why don't you just hang out a minute? Let me go check on all that. Start mingling among yourselves if you like, and I'll see when we're ready to, to eat. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for attending. Thank you for supporting our program, and we'll catch up. And if you have any questions for any of the board members, just let us know.